To build this steering wheel, we will use some basic tools, 3D printing and readily available materials. The wheel design process started from an image of the Audi DTM rim. The main body, handles and hub are all 3D modelled to match the shape of the rim and to hold the electronics. From the 3D design, an outline template of the rim is created. The template can be printed out onto paper and used as a cutting guide. If you have access to a larger A3 printer, it can be printed out on one page. Otherwise it can be printed across two A4 pages. Then these will need to be aligned and joined together to make the completed template. The main body of the wheel is made out of a 3mm aluminium plate. Plates of metal can be found online or at a local metal supplier. Carbon fibre can also be used for the main body which is lighter and stronger but it's harder to work with. Extra safety precautions also need to be considered when working with carbon fibre. The cutting template is placed and glued onto the aluminium with a contact adhesive spray. Before cutting we will need to use a centre punch to mark some drilling points for the internal sections of the handles. Then select a drill slightly larger than the blade and drill two or more holes in the internal area. Next we can begin cutting out the internal sections using a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. After the internal sections are cut, we can continue cutting around the outer edges. When cutting the edge, leave a fraction of a millimetre bigger than the template, as this can be shaped and filed down. Once the shape has been cut out, we can use the centre punch again to mark the drilling points for the switches, handles and wheel mounting points. Drill the smaller holes for the handles, then drill larger holes for the centre mounting points and for the switches. Use round and flat files to clean up the edges and smooth any sharp or rough spots. Then after filing, use sandpaper on all the edges for a clean finish. We will need to make and prepare four handles, two for the front of the rim and two for the back. The 3D printed handles can be fitted to the rim without covering or they can be finished with a suede material. Lay out the suede and with a pair of scissors cut around the handle allowing extra material around the edges. Brush contact adhesive onto the surfaces of the 3D printed handle. Then carefully place the suede onto the handle and work the material around the edges adding more adhesive with a brush where needed. Keep working and shaping the suede around the handles and then add relief cuts around the radiuses and any tight points. Fold the material over to the back of the handle and glue in place. Then trim off any excess material to finish. Before covering the front handles, insert the nuts and add a small drop of super glue. On the covered back handles, make three small cutouts with a utility knife for the bolts to pass through. The handles can be set aside to dry and we can continue with the wheel build. At this stage we can choose to leave the rim with a natural metal finish, paint or cover with a vinyl wrap. To wrap the wheel with a carbon vinyl, cut a piece larger than the metal plate, then apply. Next with a sharp utility knife, trim the edges and carefully cut out the holes. With the metal plate covered, the next step is to begin the installation of the switches. Using the wires that are provided with a USB joystick board, cut off the spade terminals with a pair of cutters. Then strip the ends of the wires, leaving the white connection plug attached, as this will be used to plug the wires into the board. Cut lengths of heat shrink measuring from the switch terminals to the centre of the wheel. Next cut larger pieces of heat shrink to cover the switch terminals. On 10 sets of wires, place and prepare one longer piece and two larger sized pieces of heat shrink. We will leave two sets of wires uncovered, as these will be internal and used for the paddle shifters. The next step is to work on soldering the wires to the terminals of the 10 switches. With all the wires soldered to the switches, we can move the heat shrink and cover the switch terminals. Apply some heat with a heat gun or with a butane torch to shrink the tubing. The next step is to print and prepare the parts for the magnetic paddle shifters and the hub spacers. The first step of assembly is to attach the base of the shifter to the hub spacer with four M3 bolts. 
Then the wires are passed through the hole from the hub base into the shifter. The wires are then soldered to the switch terminals of the paddle shifters. Install and close the top section of the paddle shifter with four bolts to complete. Repeat the same process for the second paddle shifter. We can also add some hot glue into the channels on the hub to hold the shifter wires in place. The next step is to pass the wire connections from the switches through the centre of the hub spacer. Then work around the wheel and adjust the wires to fit in the cutouts on the hub. We can now install the joystick board and begin to plug in the wiring from the switches and the paddle shifters. The board is then placed into the cutout space in the hub with the wires neatly underneath. The USB cable to the board is secured in between the hub spaces and held in place with a cable tie. The next step is to plug the USB connection into the joystick encoder, then carefully close the back hub. While holding together, pass the bolts through the front of the wheel and place a nut on the back of each bolt. These will be removed later when installing the quick release adapters. To install the handles onto the rim, place the handle with the pre-installed nuts on the front and then place the other matching handle with the bolts on the back and tighten. For the final details, we can install labels for the buttons and install a 3D printed logo on the centre of the wheel. The buttons and shifters on the wheel are tested by connecting to a free USB port on a PC, then opening the USB controller's properties to check the functions. For compatibility, the wheel uses a standard 70mm bolt pattern. This means with different adapters, the wheel can be fitted to suit Logitech, Thrustmaster or Fnatic wheelbases. The rim is easily installed onto a Logitech base using a quick release clamp adapter. This can quickly attach the rim to the wheelbase for use. For installation and fitting onto a Thrustmaster wheelbase, a screw type quick release adapter is used. To install the rim on a Fnatic wheelbase, the rim is fitted to a universal hub, then installed. With a few basic tools and materials, you can build your own custom steering wheels for a racing simulator.